This was a standard supination external rotation type 4 fracture. We anatomically plated the fibula. Subsequently, the K wire from the Acros fibulink kit was introduced through the plate parallel to the joint line, several centimeters proximal to the joint line. This is an intraoperative view. You can see the fibular plate and the K wire. Next, the step drill from the kit was introduced over the K wire, and the fibula and tibia were drilled with the step drill. Here you can see a fluoroscopic image of the tibia and fibula being drilled with the step drill. The smaller drill drills both the fibula and tibia, whereas the larger diameter portion of the drill only goes through the fibula, which is very important. This is easily confirmed with fluoroscopy. Here you can see the drill is further introduced carefully. And finally, through the fibula only. Next, the K wire is removed and the tibial screw for the fibulink is fully inserted into the tibia and will come to a hard stop. However, it is recommended that this is confirmed un under fluoroscopy that it is fully engaged in the tibia. Here you can see a fluoroscopic image of the tibial screw being advanced into its final position and confirmed to be fully seated in the tibia. Here you can see the indicator laser line. If it is exposed, we will go ahead and use the standard short button. It, if, it, if it is buried in the fibula, we will use the long button. In this instance, it was exposed, we'll use the short button. Next, the sutures were removed from the cleat and the handle is removed. Next, the appropriate sized fibular button along with its handle are slid over the guide tube. Subsequently, a hemostat is used to grab the guide tube and pull laterally. This engages the, th the threads of the fibular button with the fibulink. Clockwise rotation tightens the construct and counterclockwise rotation will loosen the construct. This is important as this allows the surgeon to dial in the appropriate tension of the device to reduce the syndesmosis anatomically without over tightening. Fluoroscopy should then be used to confirm an anatomic reduction of the syndesmosis.
Next, the gold tuck guide tube is then removed with the hemostat and the handle and the silver guide tube are slid out.